Hello, it is Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle, so another themed puzzle, another fairly gentle puzzle to help us ease into the week. And this particular edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to you by Quotidiophile, Cass Wilkinson Saldana, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks as benefactors, get that Let's Check the Crosses mug as well as this uh, recognition, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. But of course, at any level of supporting this channel through the Patreon campaign with for just a, uh, a few pounds or the equivalent in your local currency per month, you can get access to the full spread of um, bonus video solves that live on that Patreon feed, as well as access to the extra channel on the Daily Solve Discord chat server. And if you're interested in the Daily Solve Discord chat server beyond that community of other uh, viewers of this channel, you can find that in the link in the description field underneath the video, as well as the Patreon link. So uh, let's solve today's crossword, the Tuesday crossword, as I said. This is a themed puzzle constructed by Ray Brunsberg and Ellen Brunsberg. They are debut constructors, each of them, and uh, they are a uh, collaborative pair of spouses. They are married. And this is their, uh, not the first puzzle they've constructed, but the first that was accepted to the Times, apparently, after several attempts. Um, as with, I suppose, I think as with a number of our debut constructors over, over the course of the series, uh, new to the um, new to constructing during quarantine. So uh, let's see what they came up with. Uh, I suppose, I suppose, I think they went, what did I say? Five or six submissions that they, uh, that they put in there before getting one approved. So maybe that means this is a particularly good theme if they had to try that many times. Let's find out. A smug expression. It could be, it could be a sneer. Um, it probably could be other things as well though. So I'm going to look around a bit. Cabbage, oh yeah, cabbage dishes could be slaws, as in coleslaws, side dish. So maybe this is indeed sneer. And thieving condors of Mario games. Thieving condors, so birds of some kind. Of Mario games, I don't know. Home to the Atlantis Casino. And highbrow tower material. You know what, I don't think this is sneer. <laughs> Uh, this other one might still be slaws, but none of these are looking good. Highbrow tower material looks like ivory to me. The ivory tower, often used as a metaphor for academia. And a smug expression. I don't know. Let's keep looking around. How about that? Gentle attention getter. Could be, I don't know, pst or a tap or something like that. Fidelio is Beethoven's only one. That is Beethoven's only opera. Um... Yeah, Beethoven only wrote a single opera, Fidelio. T or F say, uh, true or false, I think in this context, abbreviation answer. So uh, we could probably do without the abbreviation indicator here because T or F are themselves already abbreviations of true and false, but it's a Tuesday puzzle. It's intended to be a gentle puzzle, so we get that extra bit of help. And a Scott Joplin tune. Now we've got two musical clues crossing one another. Scott Joplin, the great ragtime composer. So um, a rag such as the Maple Leaf Rag is a famous tune by Scott Joplin. And the hundred folds on a chef, chef's toque are said to represent the number of ways to prepare this. Oh, interesting. So the chef's toque is the, that's the, the iconic hat that I think, I think has been part of the kind of classical chef's costume since the 18th century, I think. Um, maybe an egg, a hundred ways to prepare an egg, maybe. It seems plausible that a chef would have such a repertoire. Tongue but not cheek, an organ, I suppose, an organ of the body. And pick me, pick me, maybe that's ooh, ooh. So as is often the case when we have a um, quoted uh, clue, often the answer as well will be a verbal exclamation or phrase of some kind. And so it is also something one exclaims. And the repetition of pick me, pick me mirrors the repetition of ooh, ooh. So here we have blank boson, the so-called God particle, Higgs boson. I think the uh, the scientists behind the discovery of the Higgs boson, I think, are not thrilled about the God particle term because it's sort of it's the kind of thing that makes people 
as is the case with me, I suppose, maybe less aware of what it actually is because it gets trapped behind this kind of pithy uh, phrase that isn't actually very scientifically useful. Okay, one named singer who pioneered the Minneapolis sound, that's Prince. What an interesting thing about Prince's Minneapolis sound, there's no bass in it. I feel like Prince, obviously a truly incredible songwriter, I mean, unbelievably uh, talented songwriter and performer, but a um, really distinctive thing about his sound is that he doesn't use bass, or at least to, to my ear, almost never does. Uh, and the kind, a, a lot of the kind of music that Prince uh, made. I mean, pop music in general tends to be very bass heavy, but um, yeah, not not in his case. Completely fascinating, I think. Okay, general's responsibility war something war battalion. That doesn't really sound like a real phrase. Uh, let's keep looking around. What is this, Foxy? That could be Sly. And here we have rock genre. So this could be rock music. Or it could be, obviously, um, mineral, hard rock. Well, I guess hard rock is also a music genre. Uh, rock genre. Actually, I'm not really seeing it. What about this? Be honest with. Oh, it could be level with. And the with in parentheses means we're going to append that word also to the answer, and it will help make the clue and answer a better match. So be honest and level could be said to be uh, synonyms in a certain context, but when you add be honest with or level with, they're much, much easier to uh, equate. To make amends is to atone, to um, repent, I suppose, in a way. Uh, so rock genre is metal, so indeed it is it is music. There we go. And it's kind of fun that it's also a different material to rock physically. Home to the Atlantic, Atlantic Casino. Oh, it must be Reno, Reno, Nevada, the other um, certainly less major, but still fairly noteworthy, uh, Nevada gambling city. And a smug expression is a smirk. There we go. That's better than a sneer for smug. I should have gotten that myself, but I didn't. Thieving condors of Mario games. What is this? Kleptos? I mean, that would sort of allude to kleptomania, which is thieving, but I don't, I don't know. I don't recognize it, so I'm not going to put it in. General's responsibility. War of, don't know what that is. Hmm. Actually, if it, if it were, if this were to be war of, that would make kleptos incorrect. Maybe I'll just leave that out for now. I'm not sure. Corn units could be ears of corn, maybe? I don't know. Blank teaching. Is this Lao teaching? Sounds familiar. But I'm still not sure about any of this. So you know what? I'm just going to delete it all because I... I don't know. Holy blank and gentle attention getter. Let's try tap there and see if we can get anything. Bygone could be passed. Uh, this is pi r squared for a circle. That is the area of a circle is um, the value of pi multiplied by the square, the square of the radius of the circle. Tide competitor. I think this is a laundry detergent era. Sounds right. And high or low follower could be high res or low res, high resolution or low resolution as a, um, you know, display, a monitor. Holy blank, holy, is this holy Teresa, holy, as in Mother Teresa, what is this? Holy, I don't know what that is, hmm. General's responsibility. I feel as though I'm doing this very slowly for a Tuesday. <laughs> letting myself get burrowed into these particular corners of the grid. Uh, so here we have a colon in an analogy. So in an analogy, the colon is sort of the notation for is to, and then the double colon is the notation for as. So you might say, um, oh goodness, I don't know. You might say the Minneapolis sound is to prints as well, now I can't think of anything. I don't know, as soul music is to Aretha Franklin, but that's not really a good analogy because Prince sort of originated this sound and, and Aretha Franklin didn't originate soul music. But you see what I mean? We're using them to represent master practitioners of that thing. And in the analogy, we say this X is to Y as A is to B, and that's what the colon helps with. Okay, in which headshots can be taken? In which headshots can be taken? 
Boy, I really feels um rusty today. Peculiar light in the sky in brief. I guess a UFO, an unidentified flying object. And not seldom poetically would be oft, often uh, alighted. We, we, we lose the um, the end of the word as we often do with uh, poetic language. We, we contract it a bit. Gross and what is this? Apology from Iago. So this is the Shakespearean character, and I don't, I still don't really feel as though I get what's going on with the theme, although clearly General's responsibility and apology from Iago are part of the theme. But I just don't know. Date regularly could be to see, see you're seeing somebody, you're dating them regularly. Lore in. Well, it could be real in, but that doesn't really work with C. And also, be strange to have that ending with an L. Take stock of, let's just keep marching through the puzzle. Millennium at the beginning and end. I wonder if it's just M's, the beginning and the end of the word millennium, because we do have a question mark here that's indicating some kind of pun or wordplay. Could be that. Pellucid. Hmm, I don't, I'm not sure offhand. And here we have part of a horror film address for short. Part of a horror film, oh, Elm Street? Nightmare on Elm Street, maybe? And National Floral Emblems of the U.S. Is it roses? I think this might have come up recently. It turns red litmus paper blue. This must be a base, as in uh, the opposite of an acid, basic substance. Um, What about this? Bok choy is a vegetable, so that looks right. And... Miso soup cubes are tofu. You could have tofu, cubes of tofu and miso soup. A click of disapproval. Ah, so that could be tisk, tisk, tisk. And here's wears. This could be wears as in wears a bit of clothing or it could be wears as in erodes something away, wears it down. Um, here we have, it has colloquial gestures like kiss fist and shaking L, abbreviation. I wonder if this is American sign language. That seems plausible. And a university entrance exam for short. I think... The ACT is an alternate entrance exam to the SAT. So I think that's what that is. Uh, And gross, this is the sort of colloquial meaning of gross. It's yucky. Ugh, gross, yucky. So does that help here at all? Ah, right. So Iago is a character from Othello, but I wasn't sure what to do with that. Uh, But it looks like Othello does come into play here. So, oh, sorry, Othello. What does that mean? (laughs) What does that have to do with anything? Apology from Iago. Sorry, Othello. Um, well, I'm sorry to you. I can't figure out what's going on here. Oh, holy terror, though, is a phrase. So that looks right. And I'm going to put in Lao back to this 24 across because I think that is correct. Ah, and corn, corn units does look like ears of corn. Okay, so I was doing a little better than I thought I was. So a war operation is the general's responsibility. Does it mean anything that opera is in here? I don't think so. What is it? What does it mean? I'm sorry. Uh, Thieving Condors of Mario games. Kleplos, maybe? Kleplos? Sounds, it's very awkward to say, but these other letters maybe are, is this maybe Dao Te Ching, maybe, actually? Oh, I bet it is. I bet it is. I think I was thinking of Lao Tzu, the person, and this is probably Dao, as in the, the, um, the concept. So, I bet this is kleptos after all. And take stock of would be assess and lore in. And here we have pleasant whiff could be an aroma. Billionaire philanthropist George Soros. Defeat soundly, so to speak. Spank, maybe? Lore in, uh, rope in, yeah, maybe. 60 minuti would be an aura, an hour. Defeat soundly, so to speak. Uh, Requests from, asks of, an antitrust concern. This looks like something around monopoly. Antitrust concern, monopoly risk. Oops. Um, Boy, I'm going to really need that that hopeful revealer. Hopefully there is a revealer in this puzzle and it will explain to me what I'm foolishly missing here. Oh, in which headshots can be taken is soccer. I see. You can hit the ball with your head. And pellucid. Well, lucid can mean sort of clear. Is that related to this? 
wears sports. You could wear a piece of clothing. You could sport it. So this is clear. Okay, I'll have to look that up. I'm sorry. I'm not acquitting myself brilliantly today, I must say. Affirmative or negative in a debate could be a side, one side of the debate. And medium. Um, hmm. Oh, a psychic. That I see. So a, uh, a spiritual medium, I suppose you might call them. A psychic. And a big name in ice cream could be Edie, the brand name Edie's Ice Cream. And takes up or lets down, say. Rehems, maybe. You could take up or let down a dress or a pair of trousers or something like that. You could rehem it. Come as you are is a common phrase. And singer Cook, the great singer Sam Cook. Speaking of soul singers, actually. Uh, Sam Cook sort of straddled some genres, but did, did was, I think, a soul singer by kind of training. Not training, but his origins. Anyway, great singer. One Wicked Witch's Home in the Wizard of Oz. Oh, the East, I suppose. The Wicked Witch of the East, and then there was the West, and I don't remember which was the Good Witch and which was the Evil One and everything, but, but Wicked must have been East. Okay, Baltimore Seafood Specialty. Crab, I suppose. And the last OG channel, I've never heard of that, but I guess it's TBS. Editors of Crossword Puzzles, e.g. <laughs> Clue Checkers. Uh-oh. Oh, are these all games? They're all games. Wow, I absolutely did not pick up on this. Good Lord. So war is a is a card game. That's sort of <laughs> deterministic card game in which the player has really no meaningful input. Operation is a board game with, it's one of those, I don't know if these are still popular, but there was a period of time when board games with incredibly elaborate boards were common and Operation was one of these and you would sort of pretend to operate on a this plastic figure. Uh, sorry is, I think it's a board game with maybe dice or something. I'm not sure. Othello is, uh, the grid based game with those white and black backed discs. Uh, Monopoly of course is Monopoly, the, um, classic and much maligned, uh, rent seeking game. Risk is the classic war board game. Clue, Cluedo here in the UK, ludicrously is um, the uh, murder mystery game. And Checkers, of course, is Checkers, one of the classic board games. So I, that must be it. And I think there's no revealer, but this sort of, I guess this is the one that actually did serve as my revealer. This did serve as the explanatory answer to me, even though it isn't explicitly phrased that way. Clue Checkers. There we go. Boy, that that really eluded me. That was fascinating. All right. So here we have Trio, trio for Daniel Day-Lewis, he must have won three Oscars, three Academy Awards for Best Actor or Best Supporting Actor, perhaps. Probably Actor. Bohemian Folk Dances could be polkas. And Reuben Ingredient. Is there cress in a Reuben? I don't think so. So a Reuben is, I think, corned beef or pastrami and sauerkraut and... Thousand Island dressing or mustard? What is this? What is this ingredient? On rye bread, usually? Maybe it's a different meaning of Reuben. Maybe it's not the sandwich. Hooded snake is a cobra. Kimono sash is an obi. And make oneself heard in a herd. It could be to moo or to low. Those are both, those are essentially synonyms. What about this? Dagger's partner. Okay, it's to low. So Dagger's partner is a cloak, cloak and dagger, clandestine. IV amounts are cc's, cubic centimeters, and oh, I see. Reuben ingredient is Swiss cheese. I forgot, <laughs> forgot the cheese in the Reuben. There we go. Okay. They may be locked or blown. I don't see it. And country with the highest percentage of vegetarians. That's India. Uh, Hawaii's Kona Coast, I believe. And passionate learners to some. Well, it could end in an S, and one of the Affleck brothers, Casey Affleck, sounds right to me. And a college application part could be an essay. Formerly named, nay, uh, from the French for born. Uh, use that for someone's name, well, someone's former name that they've changed. And Bert's buddy on Sesame Street, of course, is Ernie, Ernie and Bert. And passionate learners to some, oh, I see, to some, they are nerds, that's what I see. And they may be locked or blown. You could lock horns, you could battle, or you could blow a horn, a musical horn. And there it is. 
So there we have the Tuesday puzzle. That was a fascinating theme. It It's so interesting that that completely... So war, after getting one of these, I'm not surprised. I didn't see the pattern. I probably should have after two or three. It took me, took me until the fourth. I could imagine so. I mean, honestly, I almost solved this puzzle without picking up on the theme at all. So I wouldn't be surprised if some others have had that, have had that experience. Let me know if you did, because it was, I found it to be quite subtle. Um, and in a way it was sort of, it sort of made it, uh, clever and fun. And, and it, they clearly intentionally didn't, uh, didn't use a revealer here. Um, there's sort of this attrition as we, as, um, the possible, the, the possibilities of what this could be are, are, are whittled down until we're left with, I suppose war operation, this is, it's cleverly arranged in that these are not necessarily known as games in the primary sense of their word. Whereas checkers, you really, you don't really refer to people who check things using the word checkers very often. I mean, it, it comes up, but it's not nearly as common as a word like war or operation being used outside of their game context. Checkers disproportionately is used to represent the name of that board game. So by the time we get to the very last game in our theme, checkers, it's almost serving as our revealer because we so strongly associate that word with that game as opposed to its generic meaning in English. So it's, it's I think it's cleverly, and it's it sort of does follow that pattern Clue and checkers. I mean, Monopoly, maybe. But yeah, it is sort of arranged like that, maybe. I wonder how intentional that was. I think it might have been intentional, or I think it works quite well in terms of misdirecting me anyway. Uh, so let me know how you fared. I, Yeah, I, I danced around a lot in this puzzle. Um, and that was, that was just sort of a constant mystery to me till the very end, almost. All right. So that was our Tuesday puzzle. Uh, I, I think a worthy debut from Ray Brunsberg and Ellen Brunsberg, our um, our married debut collaborator pair. And now, why don't we uh, unwind with some comments from yesterday's puzzle? I think I have three comments here about uh, clues from the Monday. So let's see. Remy explains cul-de-sac literally means bags arse in French. It's actually quite familiar, and the preferred word would be impasse. And uh, Mitch Mastroni says, my French-speaking partner assures me that cul-de-sac sounds ridiculous in her native language. Um, so that's good knowledge. And George Adams clarifies that TNT, whose uh, full name I struggled to remember, and as it turns out, I don't think I knew it, uh, George Adams says TNT is the abbreviation of trinitrotoluene, trinitrotoluene, sorry, trinitrotoluene. I think that's how it is. That's TNT for you. Uh, don't ask me to explain what each of those individual components represents. And finally, Kathy Swope explains that ILO, which was referenced in the puzzle yesterday, uh, as an agency of the UN, is the International Labor Organization, the oldest, dating to 1919, and first specialized agency of the UN. So that is good to know. She adds, Fun Monday pause, puzzle and solve. Almost no E yelling. Well, that's good. Always always good when I can get through a puzzle with minimal minimal E yelling. So that is that for, um, for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do subscribe to the channel. You can um, do that to easily get uh, these videos in your subscription feed on, on your YouTube account uh, each morning with or without notifications, depending on your preferences. And if you do know someone who might enjoy this series, this channel, please do pass this along. I'd very much appreciate it. So thank you if you um, if you have ever done so, or if you're about to. Thanks. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. Uh, I very much appreciate that. And if you'd like to uh, join them, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. And you'll get that extra access as well to the um, Discord chat server. Consider popping in there. And all that said, I hope you'll come back tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle, another themed puzzle and a little step up in difficulty before we get to our tricky Thursday. So please come back for that. Join me, join me for the Wednesday solve. But until that point, do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Bye.